Vamos usar uma própria missão que tem aqui no próprio game, que é uma missão de treinamento. Eles colocaram algumas missões de treinamento junto com o um pacote. Essa aqui é a Gold Star, ou Star Up, ou seja, partida a frio. É, o cockpit vai estar tá aberto, então o som vai estar tá bem alto. Além disso, haverá um instrutor que irá falar em inglês para nós. E nós vamos seguir os passos que ele vai orientar. Por isso, bora lá! Welcome to this training lesson on starting up the Hornet. In some missions, you will find yourself in a cold and dark hornet that you will need to bring to life. While this can be a rather long process as described in the manual, you can also enable the auto start function. However, for this lesson, we'll review the full startup procedure. Press spacebar when you are ready to get started. Ok, toda vez que a gente começar alguma sequência que ele falar, terá de usar a barra de espaço. Antes disso, vamos tirar esse piloto aqui. É, se não me engano, é chip mais P. E vamos tirar a alavanca, porque ela, tra ela atrapalha a nossa visão aqui nesse painel, é o Blake Space. Beleza, agora a barra de espaço para continuar a instrução. Bora lá, vamos dar uma partida aqui. Ele fala e a gente faz. The first thing we need to do is enable the two batteries. This will allow operation of the canopy and power the engine igniters. You'll also notice that the integrated fuel and engine indicator, or IFE, in the lower left portion of the instrument panel will have power. Move the battery switch to the up or on position with a right mouse button click. Oh, que já clica com o mouse com o botão direito. Aí você aciona ele. Direito. The Hornet has two fire detection circuits, A and B, that test for fire in the engines, auxiliary power unit, and bleed air system. Before we go into detail on that though, check that the hydraulic brake pressure gauge for the wheel brakes shows at least 3000 PSI. Confirm this by looking at the gauge, which is located to the left and up from the highlighted fire test switch. Okay, now put the spring-loaded fire test switch in the up test A position and keep holding it up to test the A circuits. To do this, place the mouse over the fire test switch and hold down the right mouse button. Keep holding the mouse button down and do not release it until it runs through all the fire test audio warnings. In addition to the audio warnings, also note the fire test warning lights on the upper left and right portions of the instrument panel. When it's done, press spacebar. Ok, como vocês devem ter lido lá no texto, clicar com o modão... Desculpe. <laughs> clicar com o botão direito do mouse para teste A. Engine fire left. Engine fire left. Engine fire right. Engine fire right. APU fire. APU fire. Bleed air left. Bleed air left. Bleed air right. Bleed air right. Ok, solta ele. Beleza? Agora barra de espaço de novo, que ele vai continuar a nos instruir. We will now do the same thing for the B circuit. After waiting 10 seconds, place the mouse over the fire test switch and hold down the left mouse button to move the switch in the down test B position. Keep holding it down and then release it once all the fire warning audio messages have been played. Well done. Press spacebar. Com o botão esquerdo do mouse, teste B. Engine fire left. Engine fire left. Engine fire right. Engine fire right. APU fire. APU fire. Bleed air left. Bleed air left. Bleed air right. Bleed air right. Ok, solta, né? Barra de espaço de novo. Good job. Note that in the top left portion of the IFE, you can see the RPM and temp of both the left and right engines. These will be important for when we start the engines. We will now turn on the auxiliary power unit, or APU. This is a small, self-contained engine that augments the bleed air system and will start turning the engines for engine starts. Place the APU control switch in the up or on position with a left mouse button click. Ou seja, com o botão esquerdo, left. Once the green light next to the APU switch comes on, Move the engine crank switch to its right position, marked by the R with a right mouse button click. 
This will allow the APU to power the Air Turbine Starter, or ATS, which in turn allows the Aircraft Mounted Accessory Drive, or AMAD, to start turning the fan blades within the right engine. Luzinha verde, clica com o botão direito, você é left, left or right, que ele falou. <laughs> Once the right engine RPM has reached 20%, as indicated on the IFE, move the right throttle from off to idle by pressing right shift home. This in turn will introduce fuel into the engine combustion chamber and start the igniters. Once the right engine RPM has reached 60%, the right engine start cycle is complete and the right generator is automatically engaged. Once at 60%, press spacebar. Ok, vou tentar usar minha manete aqui, só um instantinho, é, manete direita. Beleza, aí. Vai carregar aqui. 60%, como ele falou. Como eu falei, o som do motor é alto. Ok, estabilizou o barra de espaço para ele continuar a instrução. When we conducted the tests of the A and B fire test circuits, we also closed the bleed air shutoff valves. We need to reopen these by rotating the bleed air knob clockwise 360 degrees from norm to norm. Do this by right mouse button clicking on the outer portion of the knob. When done, press spacebar. Ou em outras palavras, né? gira esse botão aqui 360 graus, vai dar a volta até aqui, depois você volta em uma meia posição. Com direito, ó. Depois volta. Na mesma posição. Barra de espaço. With the right engine running and generator power on, place the left and right digital display indicators or DDIs to the day position using right mouse button clicks on both brightness selector knobs. Next, rotate the HUD Symbology brightness control knob clockwise by placing your mouse over it and rotating your mouse wheel forward. Once you see video displayed on the left and right DDIs and HUD, press spacebar. Dois clicks com mouse em cada tela, direito. Esse aqui é arroz, você pode jogar toda. Beleza? Tudo aceso, né? Barra de espaço. In the lower center of the instrument panel is the multi-purpose color display, or MPCD. Rotate the power and brightness control knob to the full bright setting by placing a mouse over the knob and rotating your mouse wheel forward. It will take a few moments to power on. Press spacebar once you see video displayed on the MPCD. Isso aqui vamos carregar ele. Manda para frente. Depois volta para trás. Depois volta para frente até ele carregar. Olha lá, beleza, carregou. Só dá um zoom aqui. Aí a tela. Beleza? On the left DDI, press the menu push button to bring up the support page. Duas vezes. The support page has several sub pages like the checklist, engine, fuel, ADI, and HSI. For now, though, press the FCS push button to select the flight control system page. The FCS page shows the status of the control surfaces and any detected FCS errors. The X's indicate detected errors, but we will address those once the left engine is started. You should not see any to, R, or FADEC caution messages along the bottom of the left DDI. Note that by default, you will not have the built-in test or bit page on the right DDI. We'll come back to this. 
During this lesson and future lessons, you will often see and hear the master caution. This is the large yellow label button on the instrument panel that will light when any caution condition is triggered. There will also be an accompanying deedle deedle sound to draw your attention. Press this button or click on it to acknowledge the caution and extinguish the light. Letra N. Depois barra de espaço. Press the master caution again to restack the caution and advisory notices along the bottom of the left DDI. Cautions will be along the top and advisories in smaller text along the bottom. If the left DDI is not on, then the caution and advisories will be displayed on another display. By default though, they will be on the left DDI. The Hornet comes equipped with an inertial navigation system, or INS. Use right mouse clicks to set the INS switch, located on the sensor panel, to the ground position. This will start an INS ground alignment. Essa chave aqui você pode colocar em CV quando estiver no porta-aviões e GND quando estiver em terra. Vamos colocar em GND. Now it is time to crank the left engine. Go ahead and move the engine crank switch to its left position, labeled L, by left mouse clicking it. Agora vamos clicar com o esquerdo para ligar o botão esquerdo aqui. Once the left engine is at 20% RPM, as indicated on the IFE, move the left throttle from off to idle by pressing right alt home. This will add fuel to the engine and start the igniters. When the left engine is at 60% RPM, press spacebar to continue. Aí na repete a mesma coisa. É, vamos tentar com a manete aqui. Beleza. Só esperar chegar a 60%. Olha o barulho do motor, senhores. Os dois motores igualzinho, né? Beleza, né? Barra de espaço. On the FCS page, we have quite a few X's indicating abnormal FCS readings. To clear these, press and hold the FCS reset button. Vamos resetar aqui. 机载供氧系统, 简称 O-Box, 位于左侧控制台的后部。将 All Box 开关向上拨至 On 档位 Oxygen, direito To the left of the INS switch is the radar switch. Set this switch to the operate position using your right mouse button. Don't worry, the radar will be in silent mode. You won't microwave the ground crew. Radar, All CRP Our next step will be to run a bit on the flight control system, or FCS. Before doing so, set the flaps to the up, auto position with the F key, or two right mouse button clicks on the flap switch. Automatic. We'll now run a bit of the flight control system. This moves the control surfaces to their limits to test for any software or mechanical errors. First, select the FCS bit page from the bit page on the right DDI. It's FCS bit. To run the FCS bit, we'll need to activate two controls at the same time. While holding up on the FCS bit switch on the right wall, press the FCS push button on the right DDI. Upon doing so, you'll see the controls being cycled on both the FCS DDI page, and if you look outside the cockpit, you can watch the wing and tail control surfaces moving. Aqui que a coisa pega, você tem que apertar esses dois botões junto. Como aqui não tem jeito, você vai apertar o, o controle do teclado é Y. Então você vai apertar Y e ao mesmo tempo apertar o nosso amiguinho aqui na tela, que é o FSC Y e ele. Once the FCS bit is complete, marked by the beep tone, place the flap switch in the center or half position 
with a left mouse button click on the switch. Takeoff is done with flaps set to half. Once we are airborne, we'll move them to auto. For takeoff, we will want our stabs trimmed for 12 degrees. To set this, press and hold down the takeoff trim button. Upon doing so, you will also notice that the stab values on the FCS page will change to 12. The leading edge flaps, trailing edge flaps, and rudder should all have values of 30 degrees. You should also have no X's on the FCS page. Okay, that's right. Uncage the backup ADI by placing your mouse over the SAI cage knob and rotating the mouse wheel aft until the red flag is stowed. Close the canopy by holding the canopy control switch in the down and close position until the canopy is closed. Do this by pressing the key combination or placing the mouse over the switch and holding down the left mouse button. Once the canopy is closed, press spacebar to continue. Scope, instructor. Isso aqui é para fechar o canopy. Ctrl C para ser mais rápido. Que ele já fecha e já trava. Travou não. At this point, the INS has been aligned as indicated on the MPCD HSI page. Move the INS switch from ground to nav with one right mouse button click on the switch. Prior to taxi, press the menu push button on the left DDI to go to the TAC or tactical page. On the TAC page, you have access to sub-pages like the store's management system, attack radar, HUD, and electronic warfare pages. EW. On the left DDI TAC page, select the HUD push button to display a mirror of the HUD on the DDI. Hood. This can be useful when head down or in case of HUD failure. Espaço. Let's now set up the right DDI. Press the menu push button on the right DDI to bring up the tactical page. DAC. DAC. Press the menu push button again to bring up the support page. Qual o comando que ele falou aqui é? Check, não é? É agora que eu tenho vai ficar enrolar, pessoal. Now on the support page, press the FCS push button. Ah, we é. will want the HUD on the left DDI and the FCS page on the right DDI when we taxi and take off. Naquela parte eu fiquei perdido, hein? The parking brake system is operated with the yellow and black parking brake handle. The handle is currently in the park position, indicated by the fact that the park label is visible to the pilot. Release the parking brake now by rotating the handle 45 degrees counterclockwise from the extended position. This can be achieved by left mouse button clicking the handle or pressing the right alt P key. This will release the lock and allow the handle to return to the horizontal stowed position where the Emerge label is visible to the pilot. Alt mais P. Alt esquerda mais P. Não, não é esse não. Então vai no mouse mesmo. This concludes the current lesson on starting up the Hornet.
As mentioned earlier though, there is also an option for automatically starting up the Hornet by pressing the left window's home key. You can end the lesson now by pressing the escape key. Ele não falou do assento. Tá tudo ok? E aí, instrutor, tá tudo ok? Posso ir embora? <risos> Já que eu tô aqui, deixa eu pegar o um negócio aqui, pera aí. Que base é essa? A frequência daqui... ATC 133. Vê se tem um 133 aqui. Não tem, então a gente coloca. Esse rádio aqui tá uma beleza. É isso aí, pessoal. Eu acredito que esteja a partida é tudo isso aqui. É isso aí. Até mais. Valeu. Fui.